In this video, I'm going to show you 12 wild mushrooms and plants that you need to know about. Late summer and early fall are some of the best times for foraging mushrooms and plants. There is such a wide variety of fungi and flora out at this time. In my region, Western North Carolina, we get a ton of rain at the end of the summer, and this creates wonderful conditions for mushrooms and plants. Lobster mushroom is a fungus that develops into this red lobster tail. Lobster mushroom isn't technically a mushroom, it's a parasitic fungus that transforms rusla and milk cap mushrooms into to this meaty lobster shape. The lobster mushrooms have a seafood smell and taste similar to that of crab or lobster. I tend to find them growing from mid-July to September and they're easy to spot in the forest with a reddish orange color. They're often covered in dirt because of their concave structure that allows soil to accumulate in the center. This makes cleaning lobster mushroom very tedious. However, the reward is some of the best seafood you'll find on the forest floor. The mushrooms are best cooked in butter and are a great substitute for traditional seafood recipes. I really enjoy making lobster rolls and lobster mac and cheese with them. There are no lookalikes of lobsters, but the mushrooms are best consumed when they're fresh, and I discard any lobster mushrooms that are old or moldy. Beefsteak fungus is a unique shelf mushroom that looks similar to raw meat. This mushroom grows mostly on oak and chestnut trees, and at its early stages it'll look like a pink tongue coming out of the tree. As it matures, it'll fan out into this kidney shape and turn a deep red color. I usually find this mushroom in July, August, and September. This mushroom has an acidic, citrus like taste and the texture is similar to meat. When you cut into this and look at the inner flesh of the mushroom, it even looks like raw meat. This mushroom is one of the few you can eat raw, but I prefer it cooked. Old Man of the Woods is a dark edible bolete that is easy to identify. These mushrooms are a grayish black color with dark scales. These caps have a spongy texture and have a gray porous underside. They have a woody stem with shaggy dark scales. These are a polarizing edible mushroom. Some people love them and others hate them. They have a mushy, melts in your mouth texture that I would describe as similar to a fudgy brownie. These flowers with the frosted tops are known as mountain mint. These plants have square stems and are in the mint family. They are easily identified by their silver leaves towards the top of the plant. This is an edible plant that can be used as a minty seasoning. It's also used herbally as a tea and as an insect repellent. The flower buds and the leaves of this plant are edible. Stronger teas of this plant are good for treating wounds and for tooth and gum health. Lion's mane is a popular edible and medicinal mushroom that grows in the spring and the fall. I tend to find this mushroom growing on hardwood trees in October. I sometimes find these mushrooms growing even into the winter in some of the warmer regions of the US. These white spiny mushrooms will grow on the sides of trees like American beech. In the early stages of growth, lion's mane can resemble a marshmallow growing on the sides of a tree, but as it matures, the spines will begin to develop and become longer and more distinctive. When it's fully grown, the spines will look like icicles dripping down from the mushroom. There are three types of heresium in North Carolina. The standard lion's mane, bear's tooth mushroom, which spines are a little bit more fragmented, and comb's tooth mushroom, which has spines going every direction, sort of like a snowflake. Lion's mane is a highly sought after choice edible mushroom. These mushrooms have a texture similar to crab cakes and are very porous and absorb the flavor they're cooked in. Lion's mane is also known for its health benefits. This mushroom has been shown to boost brain function and mental focus. It is also contains nerve growth factors that can help repair neural networks and myelin sheaths in the brain. Lion's mane is anti-inflammatory in the brain and might help with alleviating depression and anxiety. Goldenrod is a harbinger of autumn and is unfairly blamed for seasonal allergies. Goldenrod leaves and flowers are edible and medicinal. The leaves can be cooked like spinach or added to soups or salads. <laughs> and despite what you've heard, these bright yellow flowers are actually good for seasonal allergies. Their antihistamine effects can dial back the headaches and sinus congestion of allergy season. Goldenrod is also anti-inflammatory and can help with urinary tract infections and kidney health. Turkey tails are a polypore that comes in a variety of different colors. These mushrooms are too hard to eat, but are some of the best mushrooms for boosting your immune system. These multicolored polypores grow on hardwood trees with new growth fruiting in the late summer, but you can often find these mushrooms at varying stages of health all year round. There are a lot of similar polypores to turkey tails, but turkey tails can be identified by the following. Number one, the underside will have a white surface of very small pores. Number two, the top of the mushroom will have concentric bands of color. Number three, the top of the mushroom will be velvety and have some little fine hairs. Number four, the mushroom will be thin and flexible without break. After you have identified turkey tail, you can steep it in tea or make an alcoholic tincture. These mushrooms improve the immune system by boosting killer T cells, and they can also help balance gut bacteria and are high in antioxidants. 
These mushrooms form giant fairy rings around trees. They are known as honey mushrooms for their golden brown color, and they appear in the late summer in the southern regions. In the northern climates, they'll emerge in the fall. These mushrooms are a parasite that breaks down the roots of trees, and you often find them growing around the base of hardwoods. This is a great mushroom to collect in bulk because it's so prolific during its season. I can easily walk out of the forest with five to 10 pounds of honey mushrooms when they're in season. Now this can be a tricky mushroom to identify, but here are some tips. You wanna look for yellow to brown caps with little hairs and scales on the top. They have white gills on the underside and it also has a ring around the stem because it's a leftover from the partial veil it has when it's just developing. These mushrooms grow in large clusters often encircling a tree. If you take a spore print they'll have white spores. One caveat there's also another species called ringless honey mushroom which grows in the grass and doesn't contain that ring so that can be a little confusing. The taste and texture of honey mushrooms are most similar to shiitake. Now honey mushroom does have a poisonous look like deadly gallerina. These mushrooms will grow scattered instead of clustered like honey mushrooms and they're most common in the spring and in the fall. So if you find a mushroom that looks like honey mushrooms but you found it in the springtime, it's probably deadly gallerina and you want to leave that one alone. These are smaller in size and they have a rusty brown color and a rusty brown spore print. Now, Honey mushrooms have a white spore print. Chanterelles are one of the tastiest wild mushrooms. These vibrant fungi smell similar to apricots and come in many different colors. In North Carolina, there are several variations of chanterelles like golden chanterelles, cinnabar chanterelles, peach chanterelles, and many others that I cover in another video. To identify chanterelles, look for false gills on the underside. False gills are more like subtle wrinkles on the underside rather than true gills which can be detached easily. Chanterelles inner stem should be white contrasting with the outer color of the mushroom. They will also grow in singles and not in clusters like jack-o'-lantern. These mushrooms fruit from late June to September in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Chanterelles like to form in the shaded regions at the edge of forests, streams, and trails. Chanterelles start their life cycle as a standard button mushroom shape but fan out into a vase shape with wavy ridges as they mature. Chanterelles are delicious when cooked and I like to pair them with pizza, pasta, or eggs. Hickory nuts start to fall in autumn and can be collected for food or drinks. Hickory nuts resemble black walnuts but they are smaller and the husk is divided into wedges that can be easily peeled off. As the nuts fall from the tree and hit the ground, a lot of the husk will fall off from impact. When collecting hickory nuts, you want to separate the viable nuts from the bad nuts. Discard any nuts that have holes in them or are lighter than the rest. You can also do a float test by filling a bucket with water and seeing which nuts float or sink. Discard the nuts that float and keep the ones that sink. Hickory nuts are one of the tastiest nuts you can find in the forest. However, the nuts can be hard to extract from the shell. I generally use a hammer to crack the shells, but you can also use a nutcracker if you have access to that. You can eat the nuts plain in pies or in pancakes. You can also make a delicious nut milk from hickory as well. You can combine the broken shells and nuts into a large pot of water and simmer. The longer you steep the nuts and shells, the thicker the milk gets. This is one of my favorite beverages and it just tastes so woodsy and sweet. This vibrant orange shelf mushroom is common in the summer months. It's known as chicken of the woods because of how similar it tastes to chicken. I often find these polypores growing in as early as May in western North Carolina. This mushroom is one of the foolproof four and is one of the easiest mushrooms to identify in the forest. The standard chicken of the woods is bright orange on the top and has small yellow pores on the underside. Chicken of the Woods is a thick shelf mushroom with overlapping brackets. The common variety grows on hardwood trees, especially oak trees. White poured sulfur shelf mushroom is another variant of Chicken of the Woods. The underside of this mushroom is white in color rather than yellow. And the mushroom is a little bit more peach color than orange and tends to grow at the base of trees. All varieties of Chicken of the Woods taste delicious. They can be a little dry, so make sure to cook them with a lot of butter or sauce. I really like to cook them in barbecue sauce. And they really soak up and absorb all the flavor. These bright blue mushrooms look like something from the Smurfs. They're known as indigo milk cap and they have some of those vibrant blue color you can find in the forest. These mushrooms are also edible and have a similar texture to portobello mushroom. While indigo milk cap has a dazzling color on the underside, it can be tricky to spot in the forest sometimes. The top of the mushroom is a much lighter pale blue color. They're often covered in leaf litter and pine needles when they emerge from the ground. This can give them a surprisingly good camouflage for such a colorful mushroom. These mushrooms can be found in the late summer and early fall. The trees that are associated with these mushrooms are oak, 
beech and pine trees. Indigo milkcaps start out their life cycle as a flat round cap with thick edges. As the fungi matures, it'll form a vase shape with thin edges. On the underside, it has distinctive blue gills that bleed a dark milky sap whenever they're cut or bruised. This milky sap is said to make a great blue dye. Strangely enough, these mushrooms also have a very interesting fruity pebble smell to them. That's the best word I can use to describe it. The old indigos will lose their luster and start to form a greenish color over time. Indigo milk caps are edible and have a similar taste to other milk caps like leatherbacks. They are very interesting because they change the color of all the food you cook with it. So if you cook it with eggs, it'll turn your eggs a bluish green color. These are not a choice edible. They're not as tasty as other late summer mushrooms like chanterelles, but they are enjoyable to eat.